Welcome to Between the Lines podcast. I'm Jess. And I'm Janine. And we both work at the Winkler branch of the South Central Regional Library. In this podcast, we talk about books with our own twist. We talk about just the first half and predict where it might be going. And finish reading the book and discuss the second half. There will be snark. There will be spoilers. And depending on the book, there may be references to violence, sex, or other adult topics. So if that's not for you, stop listening now. All right, let's get into this week's book. Okay, today we are making all of Jess's wildest dreams come true, (laughs) and we're reading a book by Brandon Sanderson. Finally! (laughs) So today's book is Mistborn, The Final Empire, obviously by Brandon Sanderson, Um, and we are listening to the audiobook, so it's narrated by Michael Kramer. For a thousand years, the ash fell and no flowers bloomed. For a thousand years, the ska slaved in misery and lived in fear. For a thousand years, the Lord Ruler, the sliver of infinity, reigned with absolute power and ultimate terror, divinely invincible. Then, when hope was so long lost that not even its memory remained, a terribly scarred, heartbroken, half ska rediscovered it in the depths of the Lord Ruler's most hellish prison. Kelsier snapped and found in himself the powers of a mistborn. A brilliant thief and a natural leader, he turned his talents to the ultimate caper with the Lord Ruler himself as the mark. Kelsier recruited the underworld's elite, the smartest and most trustworthy Alamancers, each of whom shares one of his many powers and all of whom relish a high-stakes challenge. Only then does he reveal his ultimate dream, not just the greatest heist in history, but the downfall of the divine despot. But even with the best criminal crew ever assembled, Kel's plan looks more like the ultimate long shot until luck brings him brings a ragged girl named Vin into his life. Like him, she's a half ska orphan, but she's lived a much harsher life. Vin has learned to expect betrayal from everyone she meets and gotten it. She will have to learn to trust if Kel is to help her master powers of which she never dreamed. This saga dares to ask a simple question. What if the hero of prophecy fails? Mistborn is a series of epic fantasy novels written by American author Brandon Sanderson and published by Tor Books. The first trilogy, published between 2006 and 2008, consists of The Final Empire, The Well of Ascension, and The Hero of Ages. A second series was released between 2011 and 2022 and consists of The Alloy of Law, Shadows of Self, The Bands of Mourning, and The Lost Metal. Sanderson also released a novella in 2016, Mistborn Secret History. Sanderson plans to write a third and fourth series. So a little bit of info on the book as well, and the series as a whole. So. <laughs> you're, I loved it. It's Brandon Sanderson. You're grinning like a fool. <laughs> Nonsense. I'm grinning like an intelligent fool. <laughs> I like it. I mean, the one thing that as you're going through the summary that always gets me is, I listen to Brandon Sanderson audiobooks because they're brilliant. And every single time after I'm done an audiobook, I'll look at the actual book and go, oh, is that how you spell all the names? (laughs) I know. I was thinking about that as I was listening, and Mm -hmm. I was like, huh, okay, I wonder how this would be written in the book. Mm -hmm. Because, yeah, there's a lot of, like, different words and names and things. So, uh, yeah. And because they always talk about how, like, if you're mispronouncing something, it's because you learned it by reading a book. Mm-hmm. And so I was thinking about that, too, like, how I would be reading it if I was actually reading the book as opposed to listening to it. And that's the thing. I, I get stuck on names in books because yeah. some of them are just, I don't know, I, as you read, you kind of just work it over in your brain and go, what, how do you actually say this? Mm-hmm. So I find listening to Brandon Sanderson's books partially because they're crazy long. Mm-hmm. Um listening to them, I don't have the problem. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, because you know how it's supposed to be said. Hermione from Harry Potter is one of those <laughs> names that was like, how is it that you're supposed to say this name? Yeah, I, I imagine there's a lot of harmonies out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. one thing I did notice, or and this is on the part of the narrator, is Vin. Sometimes it sounded like Bin to mm. me. And I had, is it Vin? Is it Bin? There was something else. Like, there was three different things that I was like, I couldn't quite, it wasn't always clear. And that's more the narrator's fault than anything, of course, yeah, because. Yeah. So uh, I struggled with that one a little bit. There was something, was listening to or watching the other day, I forget which, the entire time I'm like, is it Leslie or is it Wesley? <laughs> the entire time. And finally I saw it spelled out and went, ah, it's Wesley. Okay. 
you need to be clearer in your pronunciation because mm-hmm. it's driving me bonkers. Yep. Like sometimes it was very clearly Vin, mm-hmm. but other times it sounded like there was a B at the beginning. So yeah. I was like, mm. See, my problem is I was listening to The Way of Kings, the Stormlight Archives book, um, like right before Mistborn. And now I will inevitably mess up all of the names in Mistborn <laughs> because I keep substituting them for Stormlight Archives. Okay. That's a separate series from this, yes? Yes. Okay. It's the one I would have made you do if I hadn't listened to everything five times already. (laughs) And also those ones are much, much, much longer Mm -hmm. than this one. The first one's 49, 50 hours. Yeah. Thank you for not making me listen to that. It's brilliant. You should listen to it. Everyone should listen to it. Uh, we'll see. (laughs) At this point, I'm just really, really hoping the fifth book comes out next year. <laughs> he already pushed it back. It's supposed to come back out this year. Well. And Brandon, if you're listening, hurry it up. <laughs> Stop writing other books and finish Stormlight. Come on. <laughs> what did you think of it? Um, oh, we should talk about the cover first, actually. Okay. I don't like the cover art. The cover art's terrible. Look no, it it's... Uh... Yeah, I'm not really sure. It looks like somebody fell through some glass. Is that... Well, I've seen two... Is that what I'm seeing three here? three different covers. The yeah. cover for the audiobook is... Let me call it up here. Make sure I've muted so we don't accidentally play something and then we're nailed by copyright law. Yeah, like the cover of the audiobook is... I don't like that either. Interesting. To me, it reminds me of a gargoyle. Oh, it looks I don't know. swirly. Yeah. It's an odd... Yeah. It makes sense once you've listened to the book, but... It's That's definitely really, not my, my favorite cover art. These books don't look appealing. No, they don't. At all. Like He needs a better cover artist. Compared to, um, like, The Way of Kings and that kind of thing, mm-hmm. I find the cover art of the Mistborn series is awful. I yeah. have seen the cover for uh, the second trilogy. Oh, the... Yeah, I love the Shadow of Silk, Bands of Mourning, The Lost Metal. Yeah. That stuff, it, it's better. It's definitely better, but it's still not fantastic. I mean, these books were published, like, quite a few years ago also. Oh, yeah. Like, like I was reading a review this morning when I was doing some prep for this, and it, there was, a like, a thing at the top, this re- review is, like, 10 years old or something. Do you want to continue reading? <laughs> and I was like, uh, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes, I do. So... But yeah, that like, might have something to do with it also, but I find that... Compared to... Like, I, I'm used to the Wave Kings. Mm-hmm. Brilliant cover art. Like, Stormlight Archives. Excellent cover art. And when you're reading the books, there's also a fair amount of illustrations of the different plants, animals, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Which really just adds to the whole world-building thing, because you're not wondering what what the heck rock buds are. This one, I mean, I have not picked up the physical book, but mm-hmm. art-wise, it's just kind of... Blah. Yeah. This was, I think, his first book also, though, correct? Mm. Or maybe second. It definitely towards the beginning, yeah. Yeah. So, um, does he have the same narrator for all his books? It is Michael Kramer for Stormlight Archives. I'm not entirely sure. I have not listened to all of his books yet. Okay. I'm working on it. Right. <laughs> but the ones that you have listened to are all the same narrator. Um, for Stormlight Archives, he's got Michael Kramer and then... <laughs> Let me see if I can find it here different he's got both a female narrator and a male narrator oh okay title details here we go um kate reading and michael kramer for the stormlight archives okay which i find is good because it's two main characters for stormlight a girl and a guy so Mm -hmm. it reads a bit more naturally yeah there's something about this narrator's voice that seems so familiar to me but i couldn't figure out he has narrated a couple other audiobooks yeah, but I don't generally listen to audiobooks, so that wouldn't help me. <laughs> this is now my fourth, I think. Hmm. So. I listen to mainly audiobooks because I can multitask. Yeah. I can, you know, weld weird things and listen to books at the same time. It's very yeah. handy. Yeah, that's true. Oh. That I do it, like this narrator. Yeah. Like, compared to, say, American Predator. <laughs> <laughs> that narrator this one bad. is bad. She's not bad. She's just not good. <laughs> Michael Kramer, however, is good. He is okay. He talks slowly. Mm-hmm. I sped up the speed while I was listening because then it sounded like he was talking at a normal, like a normal person. I like the way he talks. It's like, sit down, my child, and let me tell you this roving epic. So, As opposed to like, okay, let's get to the book. So normally, I cannot stand listening to things that are sped up. Yeah. This one, I, I was about maybe two-thirds 
fourth of the way through and I put it to 1.2 speed and that was like perfect <laughs> for me. I don't know. I like it. I, I like him as a narrator. Honestly, he's one of my favorites. Yeah. He's not bad. Like, he's not the worst one ever. See, the thing is, I think you and I listen to Brandon Sanderson differently. Yep. You were like, okay, this is an assignment. I have to get through it. How little time can this take? <laughs> Whereas I go, ah, oh, Brandon Sanderson. He writes crazy long books. I have to make this take long enough that I don't run out of books. <laughs> Do you feel about Brandon Sanderson the way I feel about Louise Penny? Yeah. You don't want to run out. Exactly. So I'm fine with like the pace that he's going yep. at. I think it's mm -hmm. conducive to the story and that kind of thing. Yeah. So... And I don't see it as an assignment. If I were to listen to a Louise Penny, we're probably going, like, twice the speed it's supposed to be. Uh, no, Louise Penny <laughs> should be enjoyed. I've only ever read the, um, the Hillary James Patterson, Louise Penny thing. Or, no, it's sorry, Hillary, Hillary Clinton. Clinton. Yeah, the, yeah, the one where we pitted the Clintons against each other. Mm -hmm. And that one is different from her typical books. So. Yeah, still better than Patterson. Well, absolutely. Anything's better than Patterson. Pretty much. Pretty much. Um, so... Yes, maybe my attitude about reading this impacted the way I felt about this book. It took thinking me a year of, to talk you into this. Thinking about it as an assignment is a good way to think about it because I, was, I kept saying, I have to read, listen to this audio book. And so we were on a long road trip last week, so I had a lot of time to listen, but I could only listen in like small spurts because after a while I was like... It's a fine book. I am not in love with it right now at this point. This point in the book, I am not in love with it. I am finding it kind of slow. I think that Vin is a very annoying character. Really? Yes. She's definitely not my favorite. But then again, I keep comparing her to Lyft. Um, those Stormlight Archives. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> half my references will be to Stormlight Archives, for the record. <laughs> I keep comparing her to Lyft. Okay. She's a thief who traveled to a country specifically because she heard that they had seven different types of pancakes or ten different types of pancakes and she was determined to try them all okay yeah see that i can she, get she's behind quite a hilarious little orphan um i can get behind the pancake trying so i kind of keep comparing her to that so she's not living up to lift mm -hmm. but she's also not nearly as bad as some of the ones from other books that uh she, it's a difficult she's very much a transitional character yeah like she starts off street urchin orphan thieving crew kind of thing and she's now becoming more of a con artist rather than a thief right so there's that transition which has a few bumps along the way and the thing that bugs me is the fact that everything right now is coming fairly easy to her mm -hmm. like kelsier gives her medal she burns it. it's like oh sweet cool now we got this power and he's basically going what the heck it took me months to learn that like it it's coming too easy so mm -hmm. i'm kind of just waiting for her to you know fall off a roof waiting for the other shoe to drop kind of thing well characters have to suffer <laughs> well she did i mean she did get injured yeah she got injured but like generally if there's some kind of hero's journey you know there's powers there's always some kind of hiccup mm -hmm. and there's no hiccup yet it's gonna come with that guy what's his name ellen 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 okay yeah yeah to point possibly like her powers like i'm i she burns everything, and it's fine. She picks stuff up, so I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm wondering if there's going to be issues somewhere where she runs out, she screws up, she's got powers mm -hmm. that aren't working cor correctly or something. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I want her to have a hiccup, because right now everything's <laughs> coming up roses. Yep. So. I think she's very much a surly teenager, in my opinion. Mm. And, like, she... Like, I... I understand that she has had a rough life. She doesn't trust people, but she's also like, she's nosy and she doesn't mind her own business. She has to know everything. Yeah, because in the underworld, information is power and information is safety. I know, but sometimes things are not for you to know. And maybe it's because I live with a surly teenager who thinks that she needs to know everything. See, and I'm the nosy one who is like, yes, of course I need to know everything. Why wouldn't I need to know everything? This is information. Yeah. I don't know. So, I, I just... I think we're coming at it from different angles there. As, as a character, she was not my... So far, not my favorite. See, I've got more of a problem with Kelsier than I do with Vin. Oh, I don't like Kelsier either. I don't like any of the characters in this book. Hmm. Lord Renew intrigues me. Okay. He's got... I don't know. I don't know enough about his character yet. Mm-hmm. 
but there's something off there. He's the one. Lord Renu is the um, the fake lord that they're the using fake to lord. purchase weapons. I know. There's I'm not sure that, that he's, he's actually mm. a fake lord. There is something off about him, mm-hmm. whether he's not who he says he is, despite the fact he's literally playing somebody else, mm-hmm. or if he's going to betray them in some... I don't know. I just yep. get vibes from the guy. Yep. But Kelsier right now is irking. Because <laughs> on the one hand, I'm under- I understand. It's the hero's journey, and it's Brandon Sanderson, so it will take many, many, many books. But he's at the point right now where he's the vengeful vigilante mm-hmm. rather than the hero and leader and something we can aspire to and i get that it's a process but right now he's annoying me <laughs> he is cocky he is very cocky and like he he hasn't been knocked i mean once he got out of the pith, pits of hath sin he hasn't been knocked down mm-hmm. like he keeps breaking into places he got a lord ruler's palace yeah. relatively unscathed like yeah there's a point where i'm going dude reality mm-hmm. it's gonna hit you at some point yep so. Yes, I I agree. He is overly cocky, and for the most part, everybody just loves him. I don't think they love him so much as it's a combination of fear and respect. Either way. The, those that don't know him fear him because he's this... He escaped the pits of Hassan, and before that, he was a pretty good thief. Yeah. And... Those that know him respect the fact that he got out of the pits of Hassan <laughs> and the fact that he's got ridiculous, brilliant plans that will inevitably fail at some point. <laughs> so, yeah, most of the characters right now, I'm just like, ugh. they have to grow on you like a fungus. <laughs> oh, a fungus. Mm-hmm. Good, because everybody wants a fungus. Oh, yes. Uh, that's not selling me <laughs> on this book, I have to say. What is his name? Eden? The one who is who comes to Kelsier. He's trying to get the rebel army going. Eden. Eden. When I picture him, I picture a man with dark hair, parted in the middle, like slicked down, skinny mustache, <laughs> like greasy looking. That's kind of like, um, it's like Gomez from the Adams family. Yeah, maybe. Mm-hmm. Do you know See? what? Like, that's how his voice, that's how the narrator makes his voice sound. Like, just like a greasy, like sketchy. Yeah, that and a combination of the Duke of Wesselton. <laughs> I don't know, just that kind of skeevy, mm-hmm. like, he'd stab the ball in the back if he thought it'd get him farther ahead. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly how he sounds. Mm-hmm. But that's just what I was picturing, like, yeah. Yeah. Which, to be fair, it means he's written well. <laughs> yeah. Or narrated well. Or narrated well. Yeah. So, but I was trying to figure mm-hmm. out time periods. Are we in the future or are we in the past? Um, I would say past. Okay. Somewhere I read future... But I wasn't totally sure. Well, if you look at it, it's quite... Like, there's carriages. Yes. There's... Like, to me, it's kind of 1700s, roughly. 1700s, 1800s. There's no technology. No. Is one Other thing I Other than the right aspect of it. Um, yeah. So it's like, are we in the past? What time period? I don't know why that always seems like an issue to me. I need to know what time period I'm in. Well, it places it. Like, yeah. if you know what time period you're in, you can kind of visualize the buildings and stuff around you. And yeah. The, you know, the streets are cobblestone instead of pavement or, you know, hydro-powered roads that we all drive flying cars on. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big difference. <laughs> no. um, my sister read this entire series and won't shut up about it. I told her she had to wait and not ruin it for me, in which she she does not take that direction oh. well. Um, she said the first series is kind of like the 1700s, 1800s. Um, but then the second series is, I think she said a bit more like Old West. Oh, okay. Kind of era, I think. Okay. So, hmm. kind of move from swords to guns. I see. And everybody has a dueling cane. Well, Yeah. <laughs> I would have a dueling cane if I thought I had any use for it. <laughs> Heck, I might have a dueling cane just for the fun of it. But, like, every, every person. The duels dueling... happened a lot. Did they? Yeah. Okay. How else are you going to defend the honor? I don't know. See, the thing is, sword duels, fine with it. Gun duels, not so much. Sword duels, it's basically first blood and we all agree, you know. Okay, fine, leave my sister alone. Okay, yeah, sure, don't belie my family. Okay, we all move on. Gun duels, it's a bit more like... You know, one of you is dead now, yeah. which means the other family feels like they have to avenge the death and blah 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 blah, and it just never ends. That is true. Meanwhile, 
swords. It's like paper cut. Okay, we're fine. Paper cut <laughs> from a sword. Okay. It's first blood. Yeah. Oh, but the mist wraiths, those things are creepy. I find them fascinating. Oh, yuck. I need to actually look up and see if I can find a picture of a mist wraith. Hmm. Being Brandon Sanderson, he probably commissioned some art for it. But I, don't, I find it interesting because there's not a whole lot of wildlife. No, not that they talk about. Like, <laughs> again with the Stormlight Archives. But Stormlight Archives takes place kind of on a military outpost kind of a deal for the most part-ish, being very general with it. But there's a lot of descriptions of the grass, the rock putts, the the, um, the animals, the chulls, the everything. And, like, really detailed descriptions, beautiful artwork. There's a lot of nature, world building, like, everything is different. Mm -hmm. They have sky eels. They look awesome. This doesn't have any of that. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. I found the, the, like, at one point he showed pic uh, Vin a picture of a flower. Mm-hmm. And it was just completely foreign concept. I thought that trees could be green. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, well, why would they be green? That's just nonsense. Yeah. Like, I found that part of it interesting because that's kind of the thing that I was missing mm -hmm. is descriptions of the actual country that yeah. well, these towns are in. Because you've always said that Brandon Sanderson is a good world builder. Mm -hmm. And I was kind of waiting for that. And I wasn't like, with the alamancy stuff and the burning of the metals and stuff like that part he did a decent job of but like the world like it's raining ash why is it raining ash well from the ash mounts but what is that i'm assuming it's a volcano-esque yeah but but why because it's a mountain of ash that spews ash it sounds volcano-y to me but why is that happening and why is there no flowers and see that's like, the thing where i think i'm assuming some of that will get covered in the second half but that's also something where I'm fully expecting that to be slowly revealed over the course of the entire series. Okay. So that's the thing. Like, oftentimes the first book of the series isn't his best because he goes through and he layers the characters so that they become more fully developed and the surroundings and the history and the, um, the theology of the, the world, it gets layered over the course of however many books this is seven books something like that well, the original series is a trilogy yeah but with the second and the series. second book yeah then it's seven like, it's he writes it as a series he doesn't write it as an individual book where this happens and then this happens and then this happens mm -hmm. like it needs to be experienced as a whole i don't got time for that <laughs> uh, yeah i get it <laughs> I mean, this series is a lot shorter than Stormlight Archives, where each book is like 50 hours long. But, yeah. Still, yeah, I was missing some of that for sure, because the Lord Ruler, has it been the same Lord Ruler for the thousand years? Like, does he not age? Do are all of these people, like, are they um, immortal, all of these characters? Or are they aging? Are they going to die? Like, They're not immortal. Okay, so, but the Lord Ruler obviously is. Yeah, but that's why he's a Lord Ruler, because okay. he's immortal. So, but how did he become immortal? Well, that's what we're learning now. Like, clearly... when they found the, the, the book, the journal, whatever, um, where, like, at the beginning of each chapter, there's the little quote thing, mm -hmm. right? Is that the Lord Ruler speaking? Because that part I didn't understand either. If I've got this correct, which, to be fair, I might not. I may look like an idiot in the next recording. There, at one point, I think it was Kelsier, mentioned that... The, they found the book, the one that uh, Vin took mm -hmm. out of the keep. Yeah. That was essentially a journal of mm -hmm. the Lord Ruler. And they think it's legit because there's a lot of stuff in there that if it was written by the church or whatever, they wouldn't have put it in there because it casts doubt upon the divine leadership of the Lord Ruler himself. Mm -hmm. um, if I'm understanding it correctly, all of the quotes at the beginning of the chapters are from the book of the Lord Ruler. Okay. Which kind of explains how he came to rule. Okay. If I'm interpreting this correctly. Okay. I wasn't sure. At first I was like, maybe it's Kelsier, but no, I didn't think that that was quite right. Mm, no. And then I was, I thought maybe it was, um, Cezanne? Cezanne, yeah. But then I didn't think that was right either. So. Yeah. No, see, that's the thing. Like, Brandon Sanderson often puts in little captions, Easter eggs at the beginning of chapters. Stormlight Archives, for the first book, it was... Turns out later, one of the characters is... Mm, is he killing people or just really taking advantage? Either way, um, right before people died, they... He was recording what they said. Mm -hmm. And some of this was explanations of 
distant past and theology and Dvoranism and that whole thing. Um, but you didn't know that until you'd gone through the whole thing, which is why you kind of have to listen to every Brian and Sanderson thing twice, because now I'm going through and I'm going, ah, that makes sense. Yeah. So you read it in a different context once you know that it's the right. dying words and that how it relates back to the ancients. So yeah, and he puts in little things like that that it takes you a while in the book before you actually go, oh, aha, okay, that makes sense. I think too for me, I would, I think something like this I would prefer to read mm. as opposed to listen to because there is so much there that sometimes I'm like, I can't always remember and it's hard to go back and check something they were going through all the medals and what each one did and stuff and i was like oh, i really wish like i wanted to start taking notes on that because i wanted to remember yeah those things but i was driving we were pulling a trailer and it was bumpy <laughs> yes. it was very bumpy um was really an option no and so but like if i had an actual book i could have just like marked the page and like referred back mm-hmm. and so sometimes i think too like when I'm listening to a book, this is partly why I don't like audiobooks because my mind wanders mm. and I have an easier time focusing on a physical book as opposed to an audiobook. So that's the thing. I'm so used to audiobooks that I don't have that right. problem. <laughs> right. But this, and like, I'm, see, I'm very much a, uh, throw myself into a book with no idea of mm-hmm. what it's about, who the characters are. Just, well, let's see what happens. Yep. So... I'm fine with finding out things as I go along. Mm-hmm. The the elements and the burning the different metals and stuff like that. It's something that'll come up often enough that I'm like, okay, you know, pewter is strength, tin is, you know, whatever. Right. That I don't really, like, yeah, you pay attention to it. Mm-hmm. But I know it's going to come up again. Yeah. So I'm not too fussed about going, oh, okay, tin, noted. Pewter, noted. Brass, right. noted. So. I know. There was just some things that I was like... It would be nice if I could refer back to this, just, mm. you know. And yeah, like, I, I haven't listened to a lot of audiobooks, so... I, and mostly I listen to podcasts, which are shorter, mm. generally. Yeah. And so... Less and if, massive casts and overarching themes and if I'm, giant world building. My mind wanders during a podcast and I miss something, eh. It's still somebody that dies at the end. <laughs> it's not really a big deal. I can go back if I want to and be like, oh, wait, did I... What was that? Yeah, you know, and you can go back in an audiobook. Too. I know, but it's harder because it's longer. Like if mm. I'm, if I'm reading something and then like three chapters later, and then oh, where was that point again? Right. Whereas if it's a podcast, it's usually yeah. mostly the podcasts I listen to are an hour to max. Right. Mm-hmm. I don't know. And some of these chapters were like almost an hour long. <laughs> Welcome to Brandon Sanderson. So his novellas was, are fifteen hours long. That was the thing too. I was like, okay. Where are we going to stop next? Do I have time to read this chapter? <laughs> I always had to check the times on everything and where are we and what's happening so that... Because I don't like stopping in the middle of a chapter either because mm. I just... I like things to be finished. You're fussier than I am. I am. It's true. That's why I don't listen to audiobooks. And because reading, I can see... I can check, okay, how long is this chapter? I know how fast I read. You know, I don't know. It was an audiobook. It'll tell you down to the second how long it's going to take you. Well, no, I know. I know that, but... <laughs> yeah. No, that's the thing. My my problem with this one, like every other audiobook, I don't notice chapter headings. Mm-hmm. I don't notice this, anybody saying chapter 19 or whatever. You don't notice that? I do not notice oh. that. Like, to the point where I've actually gone back and checked, like, is it actually stated? <laughs> do they actually read out chapter 19? He just because says I'm like, 19. I don't even notice. Mm-hmm. Not just with this book, with every audiobook. Yeah. No, this guy just says 19, not chapter. That's something I noticed. So... When I got to the end of the first half, I was thinking about this book, and I was thinking, why don't I like this book? You rave about this author. (laughs) You've probably brought up Brandon Sanderson on almost every episode of this podcast. Pretty much, probably. (laughs) And so I don't know if it's because it it felt like an assignment. (laughs) Although that doesn't always... I'm not sure. To be but, fair, there's some of the books that you've made me read where I'm like, oh, this is just a bloody prison sentence. <laughs> but, like, I guess... So, the Alamancy part is something different. But the general premise of the book, a group of rebels trying to overthrow a ruler. That is not original. That no, is new one of- nothing. And I'm like... The same old thing. A group of rebels trying to overthrow their governing body. Here we go again. And I didn't find the Alamancy part 
that interesting. It is not as interesting as the powers in Stormlight Archives, I'll say that much. Like, I'm hoping that there's a bit more detail added. I'm, I'm assuming there's this Brandon Anderson, he'll probably There is go crazy more with it. stuff, I'm not mm-hmm. sure if in this book. But when I was looking at the Mistborn page on Wikipedia, there was more words there that I hadn't heard yet. <laughs> so I didn't read like, vocabulary. I'm not familiar. Yes. with. Yes. And I didn't read it all because I was like, no, I'm not going to spoil. No, I was mostly looking for whatever. See, that's the thing. Alamancy is interesting. Don't get me wrong. I'm hoping there's a lot more complexity added to it because right now it is pretty much basic. Compared to the Knight's Radiance and Stormlight Archives. <laughs> I think she's... Linda, you need to put up a count of like how many times I mentioned Stormlight Archives. Yes. In this. You could make you it... shouldn't make this a drinking game because I'll be loaded by the end of it. I was just going to say, a drinking game. But... Take a shot. The Knight's Radiance, every, like there's different orders. So you've got the Windrunners, you've got the... Um, other ones that I cannot remember off the top of my head. But each order has a different power, a different talent. Mm-hmm. I'm a little bit disappointed by the fact that Vin gets all of them. And like three Whoa. seconds in. Like it generally takes a bit for the heroes to kind of find their powers and normally they lop an arm off. <laughs> that actually happened at Stormlight Archives. He regrew it. It's fine. Take a shot. <laughs> but like it took two books for Kaladin to actually develop his powers it took her two chapters yeah and he was only doing one like she's got 10 different medals so I'm a little bit disappointed in the fact that it's everything just like boom done well she's obviously an Alamancy prodigy prodigy yeah I am curious when they were breaking into the Lord Rulers um they were very interested in her Mm -hmm. To the point where I'm going, who is your father? Well, that's the thing, because they don't know who her father is. She knows. She knows. And she saw her father. I know. And that's, I think, because most Mistborns are generally noble born, right? Yes. So the fact that she is Ska is like... Well, she's half Ska. Right. And that's why, like, at the beginning of the book, at ah, wherever Kelsier was at the beginning, um, when the lord of the manor, whatever it was, took the girl to assault her. That's why they killed him after two or three weeks, so you don't have half ska, half noble, mm-hmm. possibly right. mistborn. Right. So, I'm curious. I have many questions. Like, every Brandon Sanderson book, I'm going, I need answers. <laughs> so, yeah. I don't know. I'm looking forward to the second half of the book and the rest of the series, because now I don't have to wait any longer. <laughs> I'm also waiting for her brother to come back because I feel yes. like at some point he's going to come back. And yeah, I think it's inevitable. Yeah. Like, it yeah. is definitely going to happen. So, I... Yeah, I don't know. I... Do you have any predictions for the second half of the book? I don't know. It's not a really a predicty type of book. Like, no, like... It's not a whodunit. It's... I... By the end of the book, they won't have overthrown the Lord Ruler. So the plan is not going to come to fruition by the end of this book? Oh, there's six oh, more books to go. Come on. Well, I don't like that. Not. They haven't even started the rebellion. They're still prepping. I know. They're still stocking canned goods and toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to ruin it for you. Did you honestly think it was going to happen in the first well, book? Well, I thought maybe. There might be some sort of battle. Mm, I, the battle's different, but the battle's not a war. They're not going to take out the Lord Ruler this, this book, though? No. Hmm. I'd be shocked if it even happens by the third book. Well, has to. The hero of ages. There has to be a hero. They're working on two. Finn and Kelsier. <sighs> <laughs> and this is the moment when Janine realized she didn't know what she signed up for when she was reading Brandon Sanderson. I... <laughs> See, that's the brilliant thing about it. It's not... You have to read the entirety. You have to experience the entirety. It is very much a marathon, not a sprint. Brandon Sanderson is a smart man. Yes, he is. This is how I'm going to get people to buy my books. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to resolve anything for seven books. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to take many, 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 many years to actually finish the series. Yeah. First Stormlight Archives book came out, I think, 2007. Book five is supposed to come out in 2024. That's ridiculous. Yes. Welcome to Sanderson. We love him and we hate him. (laughs) But mostly we hate him. No, no, we just disagree with some of his writing options. During COVID, he 
because a lot of his speaking tours, travel and stuff like that was cancelled. Rather than writing the next book of the Stormlight Archive series, like we all wanted him to, he wrote, I think, five books in that time. And don't get me wrong, still Brandon Sanderson books, so they're still excellent. But there's a point where we're going, finish the series! <laughs> He's planning on, I think, ten books for that series. So you're going to be reading that when you're a senior citizen. My concern is he's going to die. Mm. That's the thing that drives me bonkers with authors that do like the big, long, epic series. Mm -hmm. Please tell me you've got contingency plans. If you die, don't leave me on a cliffhanger. Right. Like, nope. Like Sue Grafton and her yes. alphabet series. Still drives me bonkers that there's no Z. <laughs> there never will be. I know, because she specifically said that there wouldn't be. Very annoying. I haven't read the series, but that's just not finished. <laughs> I've read the first few. They're not bad, but... But what's the point now that you know it's not going to finish? I don't know that in that series that matters. I don't know. I don't know anything I about don't the series. I don't like the alphabet thing. It probably helps if you read them in order, just because you can see the progression of the character and all mm. of that, but they're not, like, the storyline. You could pick up Like, she solves and... a mystery in each book. Mm -hmm. Right? So... See, that's the thing. I don't really like that kind of a series because there's a point where I'm going, oh, rinse and repeat, change the location, change the dead person, move on. <laughs> I prefer Brandon Sanderson where he builds upon everything. I mean, I don't mind the series where, like, each one is about a different character within the same little universe. Mm -hmm. That I'm fine with. But the ones where it's, like, the same character, like, oh, we saw the murder again. Great. You ever wonder why so many dead people are dropping around you? <laughs> Could maybe you be the problem? I do want somebody to write, like, a Laura Childs kind of series of cozy mysteries, and at the end it just turns out that the main character that is solving the mysteries is actually a serial killer. So all the people that got convicted were wrongly convicted? Yes. <laughs> I really want that to happen. Well, you should write it. I don't think I could tolerate going through the first half of the cheesy cozy mysteries and team havens <laughs> to get to the serial killer portion. Well... It would have to be a team, maybe, and you can make the character do whatever. No, but it's a cozy mystery. There's an element of could, cringe involved. It could be a librarian. I can't do it. I can't do it. Okay, maybe maybe you, I'll do it. I'm going to steal your idea. There you go. I've been trying to think of a good idea for a book. Yesterday, my six-year-old told me she wanted to be an author. Mm. And uh, <laughs> she got a new pen, and so she pulled out a notebook <laughs> and was writing, and she's like, I'm going to be an author. What should my first book be about? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, good to have ambitions. Yep. You know, I mean, she is six, so. Yeah, yeah. It's not going to last. But It'll be fireman by the end of the week. You never know with that one. <laughs> I am going to be honest and say I'm not sold on Brandon Sanderson yet. So. That's fine. I am. <laughs> I know. Now at least you've read a Sanderson. So you have a little bit better idea of what I'm ranting on about. Because I will continue ranting. I've read half of Sanderson. Well, we will have read the entire Sanderson by the end of it. By the end, yes. But yes, I, I do don't get know. the feeling you're not going to like it any better by the end of it. I don't think so. Because it'll end on a cliffhanger of some kind and it'll drive you bonkers. Yep. I don't like that. That's why I also don't like unsolved crimes. Mm. Because I need to know. I am looking forward to the rest of the series. I'm looking forward to the end. Me too, but that means that I can start the next one. <laughs> I timed this thing perfectly because I'm like, okay, I cannot go through this too quickly because then I have terrible self-control and I will just continue after chapter 19. <laughs> I finished chapter 19 at 10 o'clock last night well, and I'm like, good, good. Now go. I don't have to have that waiting period of like, I have to, I have to, I have to. <laughs> I'm hoping for a better second half, but I'm pretty sure I'm not going to love it by the end. I'm hoping the characters get knocked down a bit in the second half, honestly. There, Things are going a little too good for them right now. There needs to be something. Like, that one crew was all killed off, but that... That was like, eh, that's expected. Yeah. I don't know. I just am waiting for something. I don't then like I'd... it when characters have it too easy, which is why the cheesy romances drive me bonkers, because it's like, yeah, great, you guys had opened your mouth and communicated, none of this, like, we wouldn't even have a book. Yeah. And that would be preferable. <laughs> I don't like it when it, everything's like... No matter what they touch, it turns to gold. Like, Yeah. It, it drives me bonkers. There needs to be some kind of problem, conflict, mm -hmm. downfall of a character somewhere. Yeah. So. And, like, how is she picking this up so quickly? Do you think the Lord Ruler is her father? That's kind of what I'm leaning towards. Yeah. That or a... Ah, what are the guys with spikes in the eyes? Oh. Um, 
my brain is stuck on necromancer that's not it <laughs> inquisitor steel inquisitor yes that's that's my guess right now the steel inquisitors are also scary i think they're fascinating i have many questions about them see that's the thing he introduces things in the first book and then doesn't explain it till the fourth book but we make peace with it <laughs> That makes it impossible to just read one book. Yes, which is his grand plan. Yeah, I know, but... He's a sadistic genius. I don't know. I guess, yeah. I have read fantasy before, but not this kind of fantasy. It is a genre unto itself in Mm -hmm. some ways. Like, this is not your Lord of the Rings, you know, let's all go to return some jewelry kind of shtick. I haven't read Lord of the Rings. What? Have you at least watched Lord of the Rings? I watched the first one. Okay, next up we're doing Lord of the Rings. I read The Hobbit. Does that count? Mm, it was sort of. It was the shortest. <laughs> the, the Hobbit's not bad, but it's no Lord of the Rings. Hmm. We should do a book to movie, book versus movie. Uh, Lord of the Rings. Hmm. That would be good. We'll keep that <laughs> in mind. Continuing re-education of Janine. <laughs> Eventually, I'm gonna pay, what? and I'm gonna have to read Pride and Prejudice. Yes. Everybody should read Pride and Prejudice. Hmm. I heartily disagree with that. I've read it twice. Remember what I said five minutes ago about how I can't stand stories where all they had to do was talk and there'd be no book? <laughs> I think we've pretty much run out of things to talk about on a Monday morning. <laughs> and now I get to read the second half. And I'm thrilled. Yahoo. And we are back with part two of Mistborn by Brandon Sanderson. So... I don't even have to ask you what you thought because you already told me you were reading on to the second book in the series. Oh, yes. I'm already on the second one. Yeah. So I know that you enjoyed this book. Mm Mm-hmm. Any other thoughts off the top? He needs to add more humor. It wasn't very funny. It wasn't the funniest book I've ever read. Compared to Stormlight Archives, which is always going to be my, (laughs) yes, but it's not as good as, um, (laughs) this book has very little humor in it. Mm Mm-hmm. Starting on the second book, it does feel like the second book already is a bit more like, I don't want to say fun, because we're still talking about rebels and, you know, mm-hmm. the collapse of a government, so fun doesn't seem the appropriate term. Um, it's a bit more snarky, we'll put it that way. Okay. This so, was his first book, right? I think so. I'd have to double check. I'm pretty sure if I remember. Definitely one of the first ones that he's written. Yeah. Just trying to see if I have that info here. You never know with some authors, because they'll write short stories that will then be picked up and published into longer books and stuff like that. So sometimes mm-hmm. they're published in more anthologies rather than actual right. proper novels. But, no, I did like it. <laughs> As we knew you would, I think. I did not think they were going to kill the Lord Ruler in the first book. No. No, I that caught me by surprise. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was also surprising to me. Like, But now I'm just like, so what happens in the next, like, five books? <laughs> Which is why I have to start the next one. Yes. But did it ever say, maybe I missed, because when I got to, like, the epilogue, I was kind of, enough is enough with this book. <gasps> so I was maybe, like, scrolling on my phone while listening to it, <laughs> not fully concentrating. Uh, did it ever say why Ellen was going to be the new Lord Ruler? Or how he got that gig? King. Oh, King. Okay. Yeah. Whatever. They didn't he was... really say it specifically. Okay. But it, I mean, it kind of boils down to House Venture was the biggest house. Okay. Ellen was one of the few nobles left in the city that wasn't dead. <laughs> did his father get killed? Never said that, did it? Well, as I'm already on the second book, I can tell you that his father was not killed. Okay. His father left on the canal boats mm-hmm. and happens to be amassing his army outside the gates of Luthadel okay. as I write. And a second army has just shown up and they're expecting a third. It should be fun. Okay. All right. Yeah, because to me, it, I was just not quite sure how he got, how it was assumed that he would just take over. I think it's just he was the, the, the biggest, biggest house. And his and father fled. He was lord of the... Lord of the, of the dance. The, son of the lord of the biggest house. <laughs> Somebody needs to combine, uh, combine lord of the dance and lord of the flies. Lord of the dancing flies. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you if you Google that, you would find it. Oh, probably. It yeah. seems like one of those things. It does. It really does. This is really a, a, a stupid thought, but one that I was partway through and I was like, how does this narrator, how is he keeping all these voices straight? Because <laughs> he does a lot of voices. Like every character basically has their own voice. Mm-hmm. How? But not obtrusively so. No, but different enough that you can tell when it's somebody different speaking. Mm-hmm. How is he keeping that all straight? I don't know how Michael does it. 
but another series that I listened to, uh, Bloody Jack by L.A. Meyer, 10 out of 10 would recommend. It's Pirates, You Can't Go Wrong. Also, awesome narrator, totally recommend the audiobooks. Narrated by Catherine Kelgren. And what she did was she had a recording of herself doing that specific character. And when she needed a refresher course, she, she just listened listen back to the recording. Okay. So I'm not sure how Michael does so it, maybe but he, that's like, how Catherine Kelgren did. Because there are a fair amount of characters in this book. And it's not like, consistent. Like, you have yeah. characters that are like, I was here at the beginning of the book. And then they come back, like, middle end. Yeah. So and then it's I'm not like, as though you're having, a, like, they're coming up every chapter. So you're yeah. like, yeah, you're used to it. So. Yeah. I know. And some of those characters who are at the beginning, and then all of a sudden they reappeared, and I'm like, who the heck are you? <laughs> Welcome to Brandon Sanderson. Oh my goodness. It's like, it is a lot. I should have been taking, sometimes when I read books like this that are like long and really character heavy, I feel like I need to like record, like, mm-hmm. or write down, okay, this character and this is their role or how they're related or how they fit or whatever. I'm sure if you look online, somebody's done character lists. I'm sure they form. have. Yeah. I'm sure you can find that for most books really, mm-hmm. but, but yeah, sometimes I just like, well, and Part of the problem is I listened to the first half mostly while on a road trip. I couldn't really write a lot of notes. It was very bumpy. But, uh, yeah, so there were some things in the second half I was like, what? (laughs) I had to really search really far back into my brain for that information. Mm -hmm. But I don't even stop with that. Like, I don't don't stop and look anything up. I just like, yeah, I'll figure it out. No, that's what I did, too. Yeah. Most of it I think I got. I just... This is less character-heavy than Stormlight, I'll say that much. Okay. Like, I just... It's not funny. It's what I expected. You're already into the second book. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, this book was wrapped up neatly enough that I don't feel the need to read more. There are so many questions, though. There are a few questions. What about the mists? What about the Chondra? What what is the deepness? Okay, the Chondra, that thing freaked me out also. The Chondra's so bloody cool. (laughs) I like it so much. He's in the next book. He is crabby as hell. I'm there for it. Okay. She turns him into a dog. (laughs) Oh. He, the thing is, he, he becomes whatever the of the bones, body, whatever he, he eats, right? Yeah. And... Like the mysteries. She doesn't want to kill somebody so that he can turn into somebody after he's been fairly mortally wounded. So she gets him a wolfhound. <laughs> so now she's just traveling around this, like, fairly small girl with a wolfhound following her around <laughs> who talks. Okay. See, I don't know, that's just the, absorbing another being into yourself just kind of ick, icks me out. Do you eat meat? <laughs> I don't think about it like that when I eat meat. We won't have that conversation where we'll lose all the vegans in our audience. It's not, uh, anyway. I don't have a problem with it providing us with consent. (laughs) But like the mysteries, that really, that was, that's worse than the chondra. Because the chondra is just like one at a time, right? Yes. And the mysteries can absorb like many, many things. The mysteries are young chondra that's the thing essentially the way it was described and the way i understand it i could be way off base here is mist wraiths are young chondra that eat well pretty much anything Mm -hmm. and they learn to take on forms so they end up rather misshapen and you know you've got a horse head growing out of your shoulder or whatever right um but as they grow and as they develop and as they age they of course become better at these skills to the point where they can become full chondra and then they have contracts. They're very mm. big on their contracts. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it's kind of ill. I don't have a problem with it. Okay. It, it doesn't bother me. Even the mysteries. I'm just like, oh, cool. Then again, I'm used to fantasy and yeah. weird characters showing up. So, yeah. Yeah. I know. I read fantasy, but not like this kind of fantasy usually. Not good fantasy. <laughs> no, it's good. It's just, what is this? You would call this high fantasy, right? Yes. And that's different than... Regular fantasy. Regular fantasy. Yeah. yeah. To don't. be fair, regular fantasy is fine, too. Regular fantasy, I find, plays more with characters and mm-hmm. stereotypes and stuff. Like, they're more willing to, like, ah, sure, let's throw this guy in and, you know, let's give him these powers and see what happens. Mm-hmm. And then you do it long enough and then it becomes high fantasy. So, yeah, like, I mean, I've read Sarah J. Mass. I don't know if you would call that high fantasy or not i have not read sarah j mass she's on my list but you know i've got sanderson to get through we need to do a sarah j mass sure throw it on i will put it on the list the thing about this guy is i i don't feel like he should be writing romance (laughs) 
the romance parts icked me out and romance doesn't usually bother me but like why like, i don't know i think they weren't even romantic they weren't even like, no i know there's some where it's like oh but i love you to the ends of the earth i know and while but there was love, that one part but, they were like, it's, together and he's like i think i'm going to kiss you now and then she's like you probably shouldn't do that and I don't know. I don't know if it was the narrator's I think it's voice. Maybe the tone that you're using to. I I don't know if it was the narrator's voice or the way that it was written, or having seen a picture of Brandon Sanderson and thinking, no, this is the least romantic looking guy in the world. That is why you never look up authors. I'm sorry, but I have to do all these sheets. It's inevitable that I'm going to see a picture of the author. Mm. I can't research for the book without seeing the author's face. See, I'm very much in the I will never look up the author. In terms of face, mm -hmm. I will never look up any like bands, artists, whatever. Mm -hmm. I don't want to see your face. Okay, so the blood fountain was very disgusting to me, mm -hmm. and I was the like, fountain of blood. Yeah, no, gross. And the fact that like so many people were killed and there was so much blood that they could make a fountain out of it, it was just ugh. well. I believe there was already a fountain there, but then the blood, yes, yeah, yes, not to put too fine a point on it, right. Oh, I mean, sorry. yes, okay, there was a fountain there. Anyway, I did not enjoy that part at all. No, no, that part illustrated quite well as to why we have to have a revolution. Yes. Or why they had to have a revolution. I'm to. not advocating for a revolution in Canada. We'll leave that to the States. Yes. The other thing that I think we talked about already at the beginning, that we thought this was maybe his first book, some of the dialogue to me felt very juvenile. Like, there was a part... So when Vin was fighting with Shan Alaria. Mm hmm and Shan realized who Vin was, and she goes, you, you. And I was like, okay, that's where we're at with this dialogue now. I don't know, to me. What is she supposed to say exactly? I don't know, but it just sounded very like. For truth, it is my enemy. <laughs> yes, I would have enjoyed that better. That'd be a little bit weird. Well, yes, but I don't know. And maybe again, maybe again, it was the narrator that I didn't like. It was the tone. Maybe it's the fact that you sped him up. <laughs> You, you are my enemy. <laughs> you just fall on the guy. I didn't though. It was only at one point two. It wasn't that fast. He talks very slowly. He takes his time. We meander through and explore the world, not speed through it. Some of my issues with like dialogue and things could have been the narrator's voice. Also, mm -hmm. I don't know. It is not a dialogue heavy book. No, I find like That's it's also not. True. You don't have people, you know. You know, laying out their grand plans or making grand arguments or even just chit-chatting very much. Yeah, like, there was some, but... It's one of those books that if you made it into a movie, the actual script that the characters <clears throat> would be given would be very small. Mm -hmm. Most of it is... It's action. Action, scenery, explanations of your mm. political, socioeconomic, uh, religious systems. Just narration in general, yeah. right? Like... 525 hours of narration. Well, yeah. he's narrating, like, she pushed and she pulled and she flew and she this and she burned her tin and she burned her this and then she did this and, like, that kind of is what I mean by narration. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's not really... More explanation. Yeah. Yeah. It's not really describing anything, but it's... It's also not coming out of a character's mouth. Nobody can see what I'm doing. No. Anyway. Video these podcasts. <laughs> yeah. No, we shouldn't. Yeah, I didn't hate the book. It was okay. I do not have the same affinity for Brandon Sanderson as you. That being said, I did check out another Brandon Sanderson book, although I think it's wildly different from these ones. A Frugal Wizard's Guide to Medieval England? No. It was, uh, it was a girl. Tress of the Emerald Sea? That's the one. Yes, I'm looking forward to that one. Currently, the only audiobook I can find is, is in Spanish. Mm -hmm. And at this point, I've got five more Mistborn books to get through. I'm re-listening to Stormlight Archives, which is another five books, plus Warbreaker, which Chris swears up and down is the best book ever, um, <laughs> that I have to add in there somewhere. Mm -hmm. So, Tress of the Emeralds, he comes after that, or whenever it's in English. Because mm -hmm. then I'll just buy it. Unless you can read the actual book. No. <laughs> Anyways, so I have not written off Brandon Sanderson altogether. Good. I just think his big roving series might not be for you. I think you no. might prefer the standalones a bit more. Yeah, I I agree. Um, There's also like an evil librarian one, oh. which should be just, right up your alley. <laughs> what are you implying by that comment? Oh, absolutely nothing. Are you saying I'm evil? Are we not going to be doing a... 
podcast on the book How to Murder Your Boss? No. Shh. Spoiler alert. Maybe we won't be. You never know. <laughs> Tune in for more mystery. <laughs> also, the fact that it was so long allowed me to get a good chunk of work done on a crocheting project that I've been working on for a while. So yeah, there's then, also that. There's a benefit um, to having the nice long books. Mm-hmm. It's not like an hour long podcast where I'm like, great, I just barely started my project. I know. You could just sit for like, sometimes I would sit for just like two hours, and mm-hmm. which is usually kind of the amount of time I have at the end of the day. Yeah. So whatever. I ended up, like, I did not think that they were going to kill the Lord Ruler mm-hmm. in the first book. I thought for sure like second, maybe third. Mm-hmm. On the one hand, I'm like, well, cool, sure. <laughs> Slightly anticlimactic. On the other hand, now I'm like, but there's another five books. Mm-hmm. So what happens? Is he really dead? I think he's really dead. Okay. He shriveled up. Like, they true. gave he, get, he got a full Disney villain thing. That's true. Like, as I was listening to that, I was just imagining um, Mother Golfo from Tangled. Mm, yep. Pretty much exactly what happened. Yeah. So... I think he's dead dead. Okay. However, those bracelets were keeping him alive. And if he was a ferrochemist and stories, memories, and whatnot are stored in metal, is there the possibility that somebody finds the bracelets and... Could, like, reincarnate? I don't want to say reincarnate, but... Because I don't think they have that kind of power. Um, But could find out why he did what he did because it did sound like there's a good reason because he did Mm -hmm. say he was forget exactly the wording he was currently keeping the people safe not that he kept the people safe from when he defeated the whatever back then Mm -hmm. so the possibility that somebody could find the bracelets and figure out his story figure out his story decide that he had a good enough reason and then reimpose themselves as lord ruler i mean it's a possibility because also the interesting thing for me was that, like, there was, they were reading from his memoirs or whatever, mm-hmm. right? And so that was kind of the part that was at the begin. was it the beginning or the end? It's hard for me to tell. Yeah, with the audiobook, it's hard to tell. Beginning or end of each chapter. There was always a little excerpt from that. Mm-hmm. And then we found out that that person who was writing those wasn't actually the Lord Ruler. Knew it was the person was the he was writing. Yeah. That he had problems with. Yeah. Which, which I thought was really interesting also. Yeah, kind of. I mean, especially when you think of the Lord Ruler sitting there and going, ah, this guy really hated me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, that was a little I long. know, but also, like, what happened after that, right? Like, that story just kind of ends. So I would be more interested in, like, that part of the story. Yeah, see, that's... And, like, how he took over and... Kind of why I want to continue on with the rest of the series. Yeah. Well, not kind of why. That is why I'm continuing on with mm-hmm. the rest of the series. Well, and you just would anyways. Oh, I totally would anyways. So you can just fill me in so I don't actually have to. I, I will spoil the rest of the series for you because I know you're not going to read it anyway. I am totally okay with that. So yeah, it wasn't like a complete and utter, utter loss, waste of 24 hours. <laughs> but at the same time, do I feel the need to read more? No. Like sometimes we've read first books in series mm-hmm. in this podcast and I've been like, now i got to read the rest of the series because I do not feel that way with this book. The thing is, if this is one of his first books, it does kind of feel like he wrote it. So it's like, it can be done if the next books in the series didn't get picked up, but Mm -hmm. he left plenty of room for the series to continue. But, like, I'm curious, because this world of the the Final Empire, it was completely different before the Lord Ruler took over. Mm -hmm. Like, they had regular grass and trees Mm -hmm. and the color green. (laughs) Now, it's ash. Mm -hmm. And, like, it's been long enough that the plants and whatnot are browns, reds, grays, that kind of thing. Kind of like my lawn. <laughs> kind of like, yeah, summer. Like, there's... I want to know how. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm assuming the ash mounts are volcano-type dealios. Um, <laughs> that kind of thing. Um, but I want to know how. Like, and mm-hmm. I'm just going to spoil it and ruin things for you. But the myths are changing. Okay. After thousands of years with the Lord Ruler the, in charge, the myths are now changing, like, a year after he's gone. Okay. So, what does that mean? When um, Vin was fighting the Lord Ruler, she said she felt like she drew power from the mist itself. Mm-hmm. And it was always, she always assumed that Mistborn was more of a, eh, happens to be, because, you know, they run around in the night kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Is, is Mistborn a more literal 
definition. Right. Like, how do the mists come in? Because the mists also only came after the Lord Ruler. Right. So, and Condors, where did they come from? Yeah. And there's the 11th medal. And possibly 12th. And possibly 12th. And according to Chris, there's more. More than 12? More than 12. Okay. And there's also more than just Farrakami and... Or, yeah, Farrakami and Allomancy. So, I just have questions! <laughs> Put it this way, if I die and go to heaven, I will be the most annoying person God's ever met because I'm like, okay, you need to explain some stuff to me because I want to know this and this and this and this and this and this. I always, have, I need to know everything. Uh, I'm happy my mind doesn't work that way all the time. Oh, it is exhausting. Yeah, I'm sure. I did, one thing I did find interesting though, he was talking about, I don't know if it was the sun or the moon and it looked red or something, mm -hmm. something in the sky. And I was like, it just yeah, the sun's red because the ash. Yeah, yeah but it was atmosphere. like that's what's happening now with all the forest fires and mm -hmm. things like that. And I just thought that was really interesting. And the ash and whatever. This bullet like, is coming to pass. And I'm like, is there fires somewhere that they don't know that that's is causing this? Or we like, we really know about Luthadel and the Final Empire mm -hmm. and two point the ATM mines. We haven't explored beyond that, mm -hmm. which is also the thing too. Stormland Archives. <laughs> Honestly, just. Make a drinking game out of it. Um, <laughs> there, you start off, and like you're in Shinovar, you're on the Shattered Plains, you are in Carbranth. There's a ton of different locations, so it feels expansive. Mm -hmm. And there's all the different cultures, and you've got like Thalen eyebrows, and like Thalenism, and like Voronism, and like different religious things. And it, the whole thing, it feels like an entire world, an entire universe. This doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> And that's not a bad thing. But right now, I don't know how you read, but when I read, there's like a mental map and just kind of chunks get added to quite a, like unlocking maps in a video game. Mm -hmm. um, so far, it's still very small. Mm -hmm. And there is a bit more traveling, like the Terraceman, whatever his name is. Caesar? Caesar. Caesar. Is it Caesar? No. Oh, I thought it's it was. It's Caesar, not Caesar. Okay. It just sounds like he gave scissors to a lizard. <laughs> All right. Um, Hazel. He's traveling to um, different villages and whatnot to mm -hmm. share his information. Because now, as a terraceman, without the Lord Ruler imposing very strict restrictions on them, the general idea and general code of terracemen is to then go and share the information because that's kind of their job. Mm -hmm. So he's traveling now. So there's a little bit more, like, of the surrounding area of Luthadel added, but mm, it's not nearly as expansive. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. Yeah. For me, there's also no animals. I mean, I know I come back to animals every time, mm -hmm. but. Unless you. Well, you said there was a dog. Yeah, there's a wolfhound. But there's no, like, cows or anything. <laughs> like, Stormlight Archives, take a shot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> had great shells and. Um, rock buds, which are plants, white spines, like they eat, like, there's an entire, this does not have the world building that Stormlight Archives does. And that's what I'm finding lacking in it, frankly. Okay. Mm -hmm. In Stormlight Archives, he describes the plants, the animals, the weather, the climate, the, the everything. That's why it's 50 bajillion hours long. Exactly. <laughs> and that's what makes it fantastic because it builds a world that just, it's complete. Mm -hmm. Like, there's not, I don't want to say there's not questions because we live in this world and there's questions. How do a quokka do, honestly? Cassowaries. Can't argue that there's not feathered dinosaurs. Ca Linda, put a picture of cassowary on screen because you can't tell me that's not a dinosaur. Those things are freaking terrifying. They are awesome. Either way, like, this doesn't have, like, to a point it has the world building and I'm not sure if it's going to come. Mm -hmm. And I'm just, because this is in a city, whereas Stormlight is quite a bit more... I don't want to say it's in a country, but there's a lot more travel, so there's a lot more, like, the countryside kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if this is missing, because, like, you're not really going to describe a lot of foliage in the city. <laughs> but there's no animals and mm -hmm. that kind of thing, which, to me, kind of goes, like, okay, is this, like, Earth adjacent? Are we talking about another planet entirely? Where the only thing they eat is like a giant eel thing. Like, oh, there's also sky eels in Stormlight Archives. Yeah, gross. Yeah, so cool. Um, <laughs> in everything. That was two very different reactions. <laughs> Flying eels. Yeah. 
That's terrifying. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it's that that's throwing me off a little bit, where I'm like, I can't place how Earth-like this is. Mm. Like, I don't know. Yeah. I know it's the first book. Yep. And possibly his first book. And possibly his first book. And I will say he's gotten much better. I mean, marked improvement. But I think that's the thing that I'm find, finding lacking. I can deal with your, you, you, complaints about dialogue and your weird aversion to the very little bit of romance that's in here. Honestly, it could just be the narrator. Like, I, I, don't, I don't even get it. There's, it's not even... I don't know. I don't know why it bothered they me They don't so even much. kiss. There's not technically no. romance. Well, like, there was just times when the writing felt awkward to mm-hmm. me. And that's why I'm pretty sure this is his first book, and it makes sense. Mm-hmm. Like, just some of... And, like, some of the dialogue and things just felt awkward. It didn't flow quite the way that you're used to. Yes. The thing is, too, I maintain that not every book should be read loud. Yeah. When you're doing story times and stuff like that, just because it's a great book can be a fantastic book Mm -hmm. that doesn't mean you should read it out loud it doesn't necessarily work yeah so that could be too where brandon sanderson's relatively known for having great audiobooks and i think that probably impacted his writing going forward because you it's one of those things you kind of keep in mind Mm -hmm. not apparently when naming things because brandon sanderson will name things whatever he wants (laughs) i don't even want to know what his kids are named because whoo (laughs) <laughs> we shoved some vowels together there it is <laughs> but I think the knowledge that your book is going to be turned into an audiobook kind of does impact things yeah. and change your writing style at least a little bit mm-hmm. so being the first book yeah you never know could be that I've read some books they were awful as audiobooks don't do it any final thoughts because I can just keep going about this for about three or four hours for sure and I'm pretty sure nobody wants to listen to that I don't even want to listen to that. Um, no, I, like, I'm kind of ambivalent. Mm-hmm. Or what was the word that Shirley used before? Ambivalent? In, that was your word. That was <laughs> my word. Indifferent? Indifferent, yeah. Meh. I'd give it a meh. I'd give it a, I'm curious to see where this goes and mm-hmm. I want to know more. But kind of, frankly, I'd give it to pretty much any book series for the most part. Although I'm pretty sure we've had a couple on here where I'm like, please don't make me ever read another one. <laughs> yes, I'm sure we have. Put it this way. My, my general take on this is you're fine if I just give you updates on things that are happening I... every once in a blue moon rather mm-hmm. than having to read it yourself. Yeah, it's not like I like I'm not opposed to knowing more. I just don't want to take my time to mm. read it, listen to it, whatever. Yep. Because I, there are other books that I would rather read than this. Let's Storm just... Light Archives. <laughs> I, I, I honestly don't have time would... for the 50 billion yeah. hours that's going to take me. I do think you would enjoy it more. It's got humor. Perhaps I would. At this point, though, there are 50 billion hours of other books that I would like to read. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Like, and like I say, I'm not opposed to reading more of this author. I just didn't love this one enough that I had to go out and start the second one right away, like some people. Oh yeah, me, it was like in the time that it took for me to switch from one book to another. <laughs> That's it. You had the second one re- ready to oh, go. Oh yeah. Oh yes. Yeah, see and that, when I was like I kind of breathed a sigh of relief when I was done because like, oh okay, it's good, it's wrapped up enough that I'm not left with like huge questions for me. I know, you're shaking your head. I have like, huge questions. Yeah, no, it's it's fine. I want to know what the deepness is. Well, and I want to know. I don't know if I told you this before. So, spook. The language, the, the dialect that he uses, the what's of the wasn'ts is the is's. Yeah. That becomes, like, the language of the scholars in the second yes, part of the series. Yes, you did tell me that the other day. Where I'm like, I want to know how that happens. Yeah. Because you went from, like, a street dialect to, like, oh, yes, we call our college the what's of the was's. Mm-hmm. Yes. Like... I don't, I'm, I'm curious to see how he transitions between the first series and the mm-hmm. second part of the series. Like, you skip 300 years. 300 between the first and the second. Roughly. So are all the characters different then? I don't know! Chris won't tell me anything! Okay. She's listened to the entire series and she is not giving me spoilers. It's very annoying. I don't isn't, even know if Kelsey is actually dead dead. Isn't that what she wanted though? Because Marsh isn't dead dead. Oh. Arsh isn't dead dead. He is now a Steel Inquisitor. Oh, yeah, no, that was at yeah, the yeah. end of this book. Mm-hmm. I knew that. Also Steel Inquisitors. How do they live with spikes in their eyes? That part grossed and me And seven out. in their... Seven in their ribs? Ch- seven in their chest, one in their back? It's 11 altogether. Something like that. Eight. I, 
eight in their ribs, two in the eyes, one in the back, right. to hold it all together. How? How? I know. I need to know. But those, that sounds terrifying to me also. I don't know. I just. I don't, I'm curious. I'm curious as, like, he can still see, sort of, but him and Sazed were exploring a temple thing, and Sazed needed light because he couldn't see anything, and Marsh didn't. So he can see through the spikes, but it's not like regular sight. So is he like a bat with echolocation? Is it the well, vibrations? Well, he talked about the, like the lines. Shark? He talked about the blue lines at one point, right? Mm-hmm. So, but the blue lines are from burning, from burning some kind of metal. Brass. I can't keep my metal straight. I just have questions. I don't do good when I don't have answers. For me, it was just like, okay. Put it this way. I wish I was sazed. If I could get all of the facts and I could store them in different metals, it'd be brilliant. <laughs> like, yes, that is ideal. I can see you identifying with that character. Yes. I think it would be fantastic. Do you have any fun facts? I do. Good, do you I also, want to know them. <laughs> do you also want some author info first? Because sure. I don't think we did that in the first half. I don't remember. Anyways. So first, some info on Brandon Sanderson. I found some really interesting facts about him, which could maybe be considered fun facts also. Uh, But in 1994, Brandon enrolled in Brigham Young University as a biochemistry major. And I don't know, do you know Brigham Young? It's like a Mormon university, I believe. I don't really look into Mormon universities. It's in Utah anyways, and I'm pretty sure it's associated with the Mormons. Uh, Yes, from 1993. to 1997 he took time away from his studies to serve as a mis- missionary for the church of jesus christ of latter-day saints which are the mormons brandon often says that it was during this time in seoul korea that he realized that he didn't miss chemistry one bit but he did miss writing so upon his return to byu he became an english major much to the dismay of his mother who had always hoped he would become a doctor <laughs> I will never understand why mothers always hope that their kids become doctors. Bless. I know. My grandpa, often my grandpa would be like, so what are you going to be when you grow up? A doctor? A teacher? Like, those were kind of his two defaults. I'm not Mm. sure why, but Hmm. we don't have any doctors in our family. Or I don't think we have any teachers either, to be honest. We've got nurses. Uh, Anyway, Brandon began writing in earnest, taking a job as the night desk clerk at a hotel because they allowed him to write while at work, which I thought was... That is nice. Yeah. Sweet deal. During this era, he went to school full-time during the day, worked nights to pay for his schooling, and wrote as much as he could. And when does he sleep? He said it made for a rather dismal social life, but he finished seven novels during the, his undergraduate years, which I was like, seven novels? He finished seven novels during COVID, the annoying man. Brandon submitted many manuscripts for publication and accumulated quite a pile of rejection letters. In spite of this, he continued to be a dedicated writer. Now for a few fun facts, there are not a ton, but this book has been turned into a role-playing game, optioned for a movie, turned into a board game, and is part of a crossover with the video game Fortnite. Hmm. So a lot of additional things. A lot of other people like it, Janine. <laughs> yes. I'm... <laughs> I know it's fine that you I don't. said I didn't hate it, okay? <laughs> that should be good enough for you. That's not the same as liking it. <laughs> and then I found the librarylady's.com, which is a blog that is currently producing The Year of Sanderson. Nobody can see my quotations. <laughs> I don't know why I did that. An ongoing monthly series that will post on the last Friday of each month in which they will cover various Brandon Sanderson related things. Cool. So for those of you who are into Brandon Sanderson, Check that out, thelibraryladies.com. There's a home for us. There is a home for you. And it's not the sanatorium. There are many, I'm sure there are many things online for Brandon Sanderson fans. That is all I have. (laughs) (laughs) Are we sure you had more or not? Well, the other day I was printing, I think, a book review for the blog. And it printed, This it was set up on the computer to print on both sides and so there was like one line and it was just like one line on the back side no. of the page. so I don't know I was doing something with it and I was like it can't be it oh there's more <laughs> anyways that is all I have any final thoughts um I have a final thought everyone should read this book okay my final thought <laughs> is perhaps we don't have to mention Brandon Sanderson in every episode <laughs> from now on I will try going forward you've read your Sanderson now please shut up 
<laughs> well, I, I don't mind if it comes up. I know how you feel about him. But perhaps... I like his books. <laughs> perhaps it doesn't need to come up in every episode. I will try. Going forward. <laughs> that is my final thought. I will try. I will try. I'll put, uh, some, put some actual effort into not taking And also now you owe me one. Yes. You get to pick what we read. Please don't be Pride and Prejudice. <laughs> You complained about the romance in this one. I will complain about the romance in that one. <laughs> I don't think it was the romance specifically. I think it was the way that it was either narrated or written mm-hmm. that bothered me. It's not... Cause like I said, romance doesn't usually... Like, if it's really cheesy, of course. Yeah, but of course. Maybe it was just my mood that day. I don't know. Yeah, you never know. So. But anyways... Any ideas for which one you're planning on torturing me with? Mm-mm. I'm going to take a good long while to think about this. Mm. Might have to do a poll, see what they want to torture me with. Perhaps. I was thinking perhaps Emma, which is also Jane Austen. But I think you might like that one better. Mm. I was going to say, did I read it or did I watch the movie? I don't think she's I did a, either. She's a matchmaker. Yeah. There's a movie. There's a few movies, but uh, Gwyneth Paltrow is in one of them. I think I saw a trailer for it. Uh, perhaps Jane Eyre. Have you read Jane Eyre? It's not no. Jane Austen, but it's I a little not. more uh, gothic. We should do Dante's Inferno. Um, <laughs> in this week's podcast, Justin and Janine go to hell. <laughs> <laughs> we should totally do Dante's Inferno. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> my final thoughts on this book. Everybody should read it. Janine's final thoughts on this book are everybody should spend their time reading something else. <laughs> no, kind oh, of. No. <laughs> I'll leave it there. Yeah. So that's what we thought of the book. But those are just our opinions, of course. Uh, we'd like to hear yours, so leave us a comment. Thanks for joining us for Between the Lines. And thanks for editor Linda for making sense of our mess. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.